the clouds. I just had a thought as I was researching this, and I thought, I wonder what some of these other Bibles says. And I looked at the Message Bible. You know that New Age Bible that everybody's using now? Notice what it says. Suddenly two men appeared in white robes. They said, you Galileans, why do you just stand here looking up at an empty sky? This very Jesus who was taken up from among you to heaven will come as certainly and as mysteriously as he left. There's a mystery religion out there that's contained in these other Bibles that is trying to suppress the idea that Jesus is going to come revealed. They're saying, oh no, it's a big mystery. I'm telling you, every fiber of my being says that there's a, a choice coming to mankind. Is mankind going to choose the real Messiah or the fake one? The real Jesus <clears throat> or the fake Jesus? And I think the sign to those who believe the Scriptures... It's going to be that Christ is coming with clouds and Antichrist, for some reason, has no clouds. I don't know what it all means, but I think that we'll know when we see it. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so Amen. He is coming in the clouds and every eye shall see him on that day. Now, let's take this one word here that we've looked at, the word clouds, and let's just go through the Bible. We did this kind of uh, when we looked at typology, when we were talking about uh, in our last video, the trumpets. We just looked at trumpets and how they were used typologically in these very stories of the Bible and we got insight on last day's events. Let's do the same thing now with the word clouds and let's go through the scriptures and look at pictures of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ associated with clouds. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget, that's very important there, I'm going to underline that, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. I'm going to stop right here, and I'm just going to talk about this for a minute. It says, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. I believe that God is a keeper of men's souls. I really do. I believe that if God can't keep me, man, I tell you what, I couldn't keep myself. I know that. But I also believe in a person's personal responsibility. I believe that it's your responsibility. You See, God has given you a choice. God has given you a choice. Most people are choosing, have chosen, and will continue to choose the wrong thing. There are some people, although on the outside it looks like they've chosen Christianity, on the inside they really haven't. There has been no real change in their life. And they refuse to keep themselves diligently. We see people, as pastors, we see people coming in and out of the church all the time. They come in. They make it look like they got saved down at the altar. They may come for a while. We try to disciple them. We try to teach them. We try to train them. But the problem is they let so much sin into their life and they refuse to get rid of it. And they refuse to keep themselves diligently. And they forget what God has done for them and is trying to do for them. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially. Now watch this now. He says, I want you to remember something that's very, very important. Of all the things that I've done, I especially want you to remember the day that thou stoodest before the Lord God, thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together. See, this is all prophetic here. It's the gathering of the people and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, that they may teach their children. The day that he's referring to here is in Exodus 19. He said, don't forget that day. Why? Because it's the day that he came down. In fact, let's look at it here. Exodus chapter 19 Let's study the Bible here. He said, don't forget this particular day. And so it says in verse 14, Exodus 19, And Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. 
And he said unto the people, be ready against the third day and come not at your wives. There's that third day thing. Remember we talked about it in the trumpets. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain. Remember, Jesus said, my coming is going to be in the clouds. When you see the clouds, look for me. I got something neat to show you here in a little bit. Remember what we read in Genesis 9? We're going to get back to that in a minute, okay? So anyway, a thick cloud upon the mountain and the voice of the trumpet, a seating loud. See, all of these things in the New Testament, they're all tying together with stories and illustrations of the Old Testament by the study of words and the symbolic meaning of those words. A thick cloud upon the mountain, the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people uh, that was in the camp trembled. Now, this is the day that the Lord came down in the sight of all the people, and he came down in the cloud. So think about that. Let's look at Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Here, there, see, we're tying them all together. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. Now this is what we're looking at here. Clouds and thick darkness, they, they, sort of, they sort of go hand in hand. Remember early on when I was telling you some of the rules and some of the things that you can look for when you're using this revealed language in the scriptures is that you look at things that it's associated with. A lot of times you will see clouds, and thick darkness. So God tells you you can look at one and look at the other. Uh, in our Sure Word of Prophecy video, we talked about wine and strong drink. And when you see one or the other, or when you see them together, God's given you understanding of things that are taking place in the last days. So here we have clouds and thick darkness. And I want you to remember this because we're going to see it later on. It's going to be so neat. I can't wait to get to it. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall there shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A great people and a strong is a reference, I believe, to those that come from the north country. That last day's kingdom. Remember, they're going to come from two places. They're going to rise up out of the pit, and they're going to fall down from heaven. Now, the Bible tells us that heaven is a nation, and this and, and is a country, and these angels represent a nation. A great people and a strong are going to come down. They're going to cover the land as a cloud, and thick darkness is going to be upon the earth in those days. So think about all these things put together. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 16. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land and it shall be in the latter days. And I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before my eyes. Now a lot of people are saying that Gog and Magog, that's Russia. Well, you know, everybody knows that's Russia. You know, on earth it might be, but I think that there is a spirit realm representation of what Gog is. And I think that Gog represents that latter days nation, the nation that Joel warned us about when he said, you know, when the trumpets are blown, think of Revelation chapter 9, 8, 8 and 9, when these trumpets are actually blow, blown. And he tells you about this great nation rising up out of the pit and consuming the land. That's what you get an idea from when you read Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 1, 2, and 3 is that you get this idea of locusts. That's what John saw in Revelation 9, consuming the land and eating everything in its sight. And then here, the, the description here in Ezekiel chapter 38 is that of a terrible nation by the name of Gog that is coming in the latter days as a cloud to cover the land. Now, I want you to think about this. Clouds and thick darkness. You know, if you go out on some days, you see those nice, white, puffy clouds, and all oh, they look so nice. But on those days that you're outside, or those summer days, and all of a sudden, the sky darkens. And it gets incredibly dark because of the massive amount of water that is in the sky that's being held up there by the firmament that God described in Genesis chapter 1 massive amounts of water and energy and power 
and it literally darkens out the sun and a cloud is covering that land and we have been taught to be fearful of that those thunderstorms they can get pretty serious lightning floods hail things like massive winds tornadoes we tend to fear when we see that cloud coming over the land and God is getting that imagery in our mind and I want you to remember Genesis chapter 9. I want you to remember what we're to look for when we see the dark cloud rising over our life, over our homes, over our churches, over our country. When we see the dark clouds rising up, I believe that we can always see the bow in the cloud. We're going to look at that here in a little bit. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. Look at, uh, do a study of the phrase day of trouble through the scriptures. You'll get understanding. A day of wasteness and desolation. A day of darkness, here it is again, and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of the trumpet and alarm. Here's that trumpet again. Against the fenced cities and against the high towers. He's saying that the coming of the Lord, the Old Testament. Now Jesus revealed that it was going to be him coming in those clouds in the New Testament. We're told in the Old Testament that those clouds represent the time of danger. The time of great distress. The day of trouble that's coming to all the inhabitants of the earth. Isaiah 44:22 is a neat one. It says, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Now, I like this because God said, I blotted out thy sins as a cloud. Now, I want you to watch this because we, we, we look at th different things being brought together here. The judgment of the angels in the last days, the mark of the beast, the paradigm shift that's coming, the day of clouds, the day of darkness that's coming over the earth, the day of God's judgment and his wrath, the day when the trumpets are going to sound, and the day when God takes those clouds and he takes the sins of his people Israel, the lineage, the seed of Abraham, the Jews, and God is now going to redeem them by bringing a cloud over the land and thick darkness and blotting out their sins. I love it. You see, in order to really understand prophecy, you have to love Israel and you have to love their redemption the way Christ loves it. Because everything that God's going to do in the last days, number one, yeah, he's going to take us Gentiles home, but he's going to save the remnant of Israel in those days. And if you don't get that, you won't get anything out of the Bible because that is the testimony of the scripture. So you understand that when God, when, when the time comes that God brings that cloud and thick darkness over the land, that he's intending to save Israel and redeem his people. I love it. I love studying the scripture. Now I want us to take our Bible and I want us to look at Revelation chapter 10. There are some Bible scholars who disagree with me on this. There are probably some pastors out there who would disagree with me on this and, and I respect that disagreement. However, there are those who would agree with me on this. Um, either way, it's of, I mean, I don't want to say it's not important to me, but I, I follow the scriptures in what I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you something that I think is really, 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 really neat concerning the description of a mighty angel in Revelation chapter 10. You see, I think this mighty angel, I think it's Jesus. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you from the Bible why I think this mighty angel is Jesus. And I want you to follow this little, this little uh, uh, thing that we go through in the scriptures. Revelation chapter 10, verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Now, from the Bible, I'm going to show you what I believe, is I believe that this, this mighty angel is Jesus. Now, some would say, well, it's not Jesus, because Jesus is not an angel. Well,